Greetings, stakeholders. Welcome to the weekend update for the week ending Friday, August 5th, 2022. Remember, uh, do that whole like, share, subscribe, comment thing. And arcmoto.com slash IR is where you can sign up for stakeholder updates. Uh, this week, we got a special update. Uh, first, Nico and I are sitting down over Zoom with Eric Stoffel and Ian McKendrick of Stoffel Systems and Faction, uh, respectively, to talk about the Arkimoto platform for driverless and autonomy and the work that Faction's doing building on that platform. And then finally, we've got uh, some very special guests in town. I was just doing some shopping, Mark. <laughs> Where are you? Yeah. I, I like what you got. Very nice, yeah. very nice. Uh, Zach from, uh, uh, of Zach and Jesse from Now You Know, came out for an in-depth tour of the facility, of the ramp, of the amp, uh, and checked out a bunch of stuff on the product side. So much fun. So we're gonna tease a little bit of that, but then the full yeah, episodes we're, we're are gonna- We're gonna get into it on Now You Know, so you wanna go check that out. Awesome, well hey, thanks a ton for coming out. Thanks man. Looking forward to seeing the, uh, the final result. Let's get into it. Folks, welcome. Uh, we've got, uh, I have the pleasure to uh, bring on Eric Stoffel, the CEO and founder of Stoffel Systems. Uh, Eric, would you like to talk a little bit about how the torque vectoring work that you did has now led into uh, the refinements that will allow the Arkimoto to be an autonomous or driverless platform? Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, as part of the torque vectoring work that we've done that we've spoken about in other uh, uh, forums here, uh, you know, we really took control of the inverter a torque man chain, um, as well as the power steering unit to have kind of a uh, overall vehicle control architecture occurring in the VCU. So basically a driver will experience a much smoother operation for, you know, driving particularly at low speeds. But what's really powerful about that is a lot of the work we we're doing for that torque vectoring allowed us to create a really nice stack for an autonomy platform like the faction stack um, to really tap into our VCU via just the CAN bus and have kind of a control lane via an API and an interface that we define, which allows the, the faction stack or any autonomy stack to tell the vehicle how fast it wants to accelerate, how much it wants to slow down, how much it wants to turn left or right, and get a variety of feedback from the system. So it's actually a pretty slick, uh, very clean uh, way for an autonomy platform to sit on top of the Arkimoto technology stack. Um, and it was really kind of a dovetail that worked out really well. Can, can you share a little more detail on sort of what you've learned in terms of what are the the common features needed to make for a capable autonomy, autonomy based platform for Arkimoto? Yep. Well, I think uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, the capable and safe in particular is something that's really important to us. Um, so, you know, one of the things that uh, is really critical when you're coming up with any sort of autonomy platform is understanding what the status of the vehicle is and how to mitigate different off nominal conditions. So, you know, when a human's driving, you actually, as a vehicle platform, can count on a lot of the human's natural intelligence to figure out what's going on in terms of if the angle is not quite right, they just steer it back into uh, the desired direction. Um, if anything's not performing the way you'd expect, uh, you know, a human driver is actually very capable at dealing with those situations. Um, whereas with an autonomy platform, Understanding the different status and signal and control lanes um, going back and forth between the autonomy platform and the vehicle platform and figuring out what is the safest way to manage any sort of optimal conditions between those two parties is um, actually fairly challenging. And that's something that we put a lot of time into really figuring out how do we, you know, uh, transmit any sort of uh, fault information or any sort of capability information, because sometimes, for example, uh, you know, there's going to be a limitation to how fast you can accelerate or decelerate due to traction conditions or vehicle component, um, you know, off nominal situations. Um, and being able to communicate that to the autonomy stack enables the autonomy stack to have a lot more intelligence and, if you will, situational awareness around what the vehicle is doing. And that's actually where a lot of the nuance is. And that's where we believe it's important to put a lot of effort into to have a, you know, high confidence, reliable outcome at the end. So Eric, the front dual motor system of the Arkimoto platform, uh, using Staffel systems, you can actually potentially get rid of that uh, power, power steering in place and replace it with one of your software stacks. Is that correct? Well, I think for certain applications, there's certain downsizing of the EPSU that can be done, um, which can result in some cost savings. Depending on the use case, 
you know, we recommend still having some EPSU capability in there for fault tolerance and safety, but there's definitely optimization that can be done in terms of the amount and the size of a unit that needs to be present. Awesome. So, uh, <coughs> do you, Ayn, uh, you, you have been working on the Archimodal platform for a little more than a year now. Uh, maybe you can share a, a little bit of what is the current state of play for Faction, uh, and you might have, uh, do, do I hear you've got a, a cool video clip to show? Yeah, definitely. I can. Uh, I'll, I have a little teaser I'll show of actual vehicle operation, but I also want to just reinforce what Eric just mentioned about how you build these systems safely. And there's a lot of companies in our industry that essentially are taking legacy vehicles and they're just bolting on autonomous systems and then you know, running them down the streets with safety drivers on board. But they're really research projects. Um, if you're going to build something you can actually take to market and scale it, you have to think chassis up. So working with Stoffel and the engineering teams at Arkimoto allow us to then run on top of a system we can trust to provide us the data we need to operate safely. Uh, we put almost as much effort into our safety architecture as we do into the driverless components, whereas the set, the faction system is essentially looking at about 160 different parameters on a FUV um, at fractions of a second uh, to make sure that this vehicle is actually operating safely. Uh, because we're not designing something to have a safety driver on board, we're designing something to be a completely driverless system. And when you do that, it's really knowing the health of that vehicle at all times. And so at Faction, we have this combination of both the autonomous system and what we call tele-assist, where human operators can assist these vehicles when they need to. Um, our system, I like to joke, is, is a driverless system, uh, where to us, autonomy is not optimization. Um, as autonomy gets better, of course, you know the human operators maybe have to supervise the vehicles less, or you can have one operator to you know multiple vehicles in the field. And that's where we really get the economies of scale. Uh, but as a quick teaser here, a couple of things that people might not know about Faction is we're literally right around the corner from Stoffel. And this was just happenstance. Uh, and so here's a clip here that we'll get rolling. Um, and so what you're seeing here is this is one of our driverless FUVs positioned on Faction's block. And it's staging here at an intersection where it's about to make a right-hand turn on the way down to Stoffel's location. And what you're gonna see here is an operator is gonna authorize this behavior of the vehicle to make its right-hand turn after that light changed from red to green. Um, I will add that we are blurring out a little of the video here for the teleassist workstation because there's a few things that we're gonna disclose later. Um, but we'll speed up the video as we zip down the block. And now as we're entering the parking lot here for Stoffel's location, we've purposely called this out as what we call a hot spot, where the vehicle will ask for teleassistance to authorize movement into that parking lot. And we purposely did a couple of them here just for demonstration purposes, but you'll see the vehicle now entering the parking lot. It's going to also ask for authorization before it pull, performs a U-turn here in front of Stoffel's building. Uh, but one of the fun parts about doing this is that, you know, we're literally around the corner or so working with Stoffel's team to do the integration on the Arkimoto platform has gone in incredibly well over the last year or so. And it allowed us to have rapid turnaround time, not only to provide feedback to the Stoffel team on things we needed, but also to be able to perform testing. Uh, so it's been actually a really good partnership. And the, the vehicle you see operating here, this is a FUV based base platform. We also have the cargo one, which is also based on the Arkimoto platform. Um, yeah. These vehicles Can are testing know? right now. Oh, I was just going to say, can you talk a little bit about the the cargo version? Because I, I I seem to recall you have uh, recently put out some uh, a, a cool teaser of what you're what you're looking at there. Yeah, of course, the the cargo version is a great one because we're getting a lot of interest from people who want to um, take advantage of what they call micro logistics, and uh, being able to move goods around for people. Um, is one of the great things this platform is designed for, for these short hauls. It can do about 500 pounds. Uh, the vehicle system is exactly the same from FUV to the cargo platform. So there's economies of scale there for us, as well as Arkimoto when it comes to producing them. Uh, and that vehicle is actually entering trials this summer. And so we are actively delivering, I'm happy to announce as of this week, uh, we are doing some trials with some local awesome. customers in the Bay Area. Yeah, it's, it's an exciting next couple of months for us. Congratulations, sir. Um, so if I could hit on some of the shareholder questions I got, um, what would you see are the first real use cases for the faction technology? So initially, it's business to business. And part of the reason there is the we have customers that are looking to move goods and services, hub and spoke, point to point. 
it's a great use of autonomous systems. Um, uh, now, of course, all of us are very passionate about the ride on demand use case where you can press a button on your phone, vehicle rolls up, you get to drive it yourself. Uh, Mark has also talked about the robo valet feature that Arkimoto would like to uh, roll out to customers too. So that's definitely on the roadmap for supporting that. It's just that for these business cases right now, uh, we have people willing to pay us tomorrow if you can handle their logistics needs. So that's where we're starting. So Hein, how is the um, Arkimoto beta testing going? I've heard you guys are taking order of some, some are on their way right now. Uh, correct. So it's going really well. So we have about uh, nine vehicles right now in operation. We have a couple more that are on their way to us right now. Uh, we even have a couple more after that. So we're continuing to take deliveries of Arkimoto chassis that we're rolling into trials with our current customers, as well as engineering testing. Um, I think there was a question on Twitter. Somebody asked about the, the, the number of 50. That's our goal for the initial fleet. So we'd like to get up to about 50 vehicles in operation over the next 12 months. And this will be a mix of engineering vehicles, as well as ones doing real jobs for paying customers. Well, guys, I, I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to uh, give our stakeholders the update. Any final thoughts before uh, we, we let you back into the fray? So the quick one from my side is uh, keep an eye out for uh, new videos and other updates coming on uh, sites like LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube channels. Uh, we're going to have some really fun stuff to share later this summer. Yeah, you can go to www.faction.us. Right on. Nice. Captain Keep, stay tuned for your torque vectoring update coming soon. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. See you soon. Uh, and again, stakeholders, we're going to play out with a few clips from Zach Cataldo's visit from Now You Know. Uh, we did the deep dive on the factory, on the products, on future plans, uh, and look for that on the Now You Know channel in the coming week. Uh, we also got Zach on uh, with Tiger and Kenzie on the podcast so if you want to learn a little bit more of his backstory, you can check that out this weekend as well. Have a great weekend. Cheers. The that I can, I can explore. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I think that's me. And? Yeah.